We'll always have parnasa. We'll always have trade. We can take us to a crazy midbar. We're not going to last there for 24 hours. And they were right. Because a logical person would assume that. But the Jews were taught not to be logical. To be filled with emuna. Emuna. And that is a radical transformation of the human mind. What? Ah, they went out to bring him back. Bayar ki barach, bayar paro ki barach ha'am. He says, we got to get them back. No problem, dust and avir, we're here to help. And Hashem gave them their own kriyas yamasuf to get to the other side. Why? Because as wicked as they were, and as wicked as their agenda was, they took a hit for the Jewish people, and they cared about the Jewish people. That's enough for them to cross the Yamsuf. They have the merit of Chesed and Achtus. There were three kings that ruled the world, according to Chazal. Which three kings ruled the world? Shlomo Amela, whose purpose it is to rule the world. That's why. That's our identity, is that world. But two other kings that were not big Tzadikim ruled the world. One was Achashverosh. Okay. And the other one was Achav. Achav. He was the, he's the second of three kings identified in Hirkiyava, in uh, Mars of Sanhedrin, as not being worthy of Olam Haba due to his great wickedness that he took the Jewish people away from Hashem. Started with the government of Abad, did massive, really did the damage, but then Achav. It was, a, it was a society that had no Torah, nothing. Who was the religion? Baal. His wife was Jezebel, Izebel. They killed every single Navi. Every person that had any knowledge of the Torah on a high, high level, prophetic knowledge, gone. <coughs> Only Eliyahu Navi was his protagonist, right? And even Eliyahu Navi ran after his horse. You know the story about, you know the, the, the episode of Eliyahu Baharakarna, right? Yeah. What's the story of Eliyahu Baharakarna? They, they challenged him the priest. But that's what they. But they, they believed in Baal. It became the official religion of Ahab's empire. The queen practiced that religion. She supported the Nevi'im of Baal. And you know what? Which queen? Zebel. He was king. Yes, I'm going to teach you the last time we to. Well, no, Bob, that's something else, actually. Uh, that's something else. Both. He was both. Lots of was the last standing of Odazara that Moshe Rabbeinu encountered. That's why they camped there, because they, they wanted to trick Paro and say, well, Hashem, Hashem destroyed every idol but this one. Lots uh -huh. was one of the most powerful of Odazara of Egypt. That's why I said no, no slave could ever escape Egypt because there was that force of evil that would kill them if they, if they tried to get out. Balzaphone and Moshe's buried, uh, you know, and then there, there had to be a burial there. They say that the great Sadiq Reb, who was your set was not that long ago, 20th Davis, Reb Yaakov um, Abu Chatzera, uh, the Abir Yaakov, is, is buried in Dinamur, Alexandria, near Alexandria, a city near Alexandria. And he's very opposite the uh, Baltzafon of Odazara. And you needed a great Tzaddik to counteract that great evil. And Moshe Rabbeinu is going to be very opposite. Right. Moshe is buried by opposite Baltzafon, but Baltzafon, where they camped, is, is uh, Viriaco, later buried there. There's a lot to talk about over there because there were many miracles in the Six Day War that took place over there and in the 73 War. They had to go over to the other side, and uh, it wasn't a simple thing at all. And it was great. Nisim, Nisim happened there for Kali Yisrael. But anyway, um, so here, here, despite the fact that he was so so evil, Achav ruled the world for fifty-five years. Because they didn't speak Russian. Because they just loved each other. Loved each other. And the king and the queen taught 
that the most important thing in the world is your love to love your fellow Jew. And Hashem says, I need that. Because I can't even give the Torah once I have that. When we came to Harsinai in this week's parasha, what do we say? Vayachanu Sham Yisrael Neged Ahar. Ke'ish Echad Levechad. Well, don't even talk to me about Torah unless you first go through the stage of Ke'ish Echad and Levechad. And Dostan and Abiram were good at it. Ahab was good at it. They were bad and rotten at everything else. But, you know, you can't get your doctorate unless you got your master's. So they had the thing. And Torah's got to be built on that foundation. If you have Torah, where there is conflict and hatred and sinasrina, what happens to the Torah? It becomes like a weapon that can be used to hurt and damage the Jewish people. Because such rabbis who are filled with sinaschinim and not, and not love of Kla Yisrael, so who do they love? Themselves. Themselves. And, and they, they have power beyond belief. It's called the Torah. It's like a nuclear weapon. And they can literally destroy uh, the, you know, the Kedusha of Am Yisrael. You know, and, and, you know, okay. So, back to our primary. So, so the Jewish people... After, in the Kriyas Yamsuf, the first thing that they see after Kriyas Yamsuf is the dead horses and the dead Mitzvim on top of them, remember, because they stayed together. <laughs> so says Seif Hazal, Puma, that the amount of wealth that was found on the seashore, 70 mules, they went out with 70 mules of wealth, but what they found on the seashore after Kriyas Yamsuf was more than everything else. Wow. Because there's a Pasuk in Shir Hashirim, it says, uh, it speaks about Nekuda Shal Kesef. So Chazal say, Nekuda Shal Kesef, that was Bizas Mitzrayim, that was the money it took out of Egypt. Oh, that's right? And Shirim, yeah, but the reference to Zahav is a reference to, in Shir Hashirim, is a reference to the gold that was on the horses' heads and the precious diamonds and rubies. You know, just one harness. Think of a harness. Think about how much would that, would that cost. A golden harness. With studded with diamonds and precious jewels, how much is that worth? I mean, you can give it a price. Can you give it a price? I mean, it may be fifty million dollars for one of those. Thirty million dollars, really? So how did Dustin Nevir become so poor? Yeah, that's a different question. They lost. They lost their influence with Paro, but that's a different story. Okay. But they still were his steadfast servants or representatives. So the sus laden with gold, Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, if you were Moshe Rabbeinu, and you had said to Jewish people, Hashem promised Avraham Avinu we have to go out here with tremendous wealth. How many truckloads? 70 truckloads of, of silver, right? Some gold, some silver, clothing, all kinds of things. So, Chavaj was saying, money? I want to just get out of here alive. What are you bothering me? What do I need money for? When someone is in the, you know, imagine somebody in a concentration camp. And he says, before you leave the concentration camp, I want you to go over there and I want you to spend a couple of days. He says, but spend a couple of days? I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. What are you telling me? During Makas Koshek, I should go around and look for things. What are you bothering me? I gotta get out of here. Oh, but later, when they get to Biza Sayyam, so it says, Vayasa Moshe Ben Moshe. Moshe forcibly, Chazal tell us, took the Jewish people away from plundering the horses. Why? If you just spent so much time convincing the poor Jewish people, Nebuch, broken slaves, to take out 70 mules, so then I guess you want them to have unlimited wealth. So here's much bigger wealth. One of those harnesses is going to last, you know, they, no people, they were millionaires. Now they're going to be billionaires. Where are they going to spend this? No mules. <laughs> What's that? Where were they going to spend this money? There was no mules. There was no the shop. basement. The truth is, that's a mistake. There were malls. Oh, there were malls. Yeah, it's if they came to you. Uh, think about it. How did, how, did, um, how did Yosef get to Mitzrayim? Oh, those, those um, merchandise. Caravans. That's what they did. They came from wherever they came. They loaded up the merchandise, and they came to you. It's much better than having to go to them. So, yeah, think about Eliezer Ebed Avram. He took his dead cows and loaded it up and went. That's what it was. On horse, yeah. Our finish is that we got to go to the malls. I'm not sure that's better. That's worse. But anyway, now it comes to you when it was the Amazon. Okay, so 
Um, why did Moshe forcibly remove the Jewish people from the Bizat Hayam? Why? Okay, so there's a number of answers. One answer is that Kesef is necessary for life, but gold was already what? Luxury. Like the Havda El Tavdalos, our quote unquote Jewish friend, socialist communist Bernie Sanders, says, you know, why do you need so much money for? Everybody should uh, drive and go take the bus. Be, be communist, be poor, distribute the wealth to all the never poor people. So we'll all be poor together. Why should somebody why should somebody have so much money? What do you need so much money for? You have a sweater, a shmata, you wear a pair of jeans, you eat simply, live in a live in a government owned apartment. You know? And we'll give you rat food rations and we'll all be happy, won't we? Not. But but um, no, we're not, we're not like that. Why not billionaires? So, but if once you cross the line from wealth, from wealth for necessity, for justness, for a mitzvah, it was a mitzvah to take that wealth. It was payback, it was compensation. It was earned with hard work, sweat, and suffering. It's no different than an award, an award from a court for, right, for damages. And Shmuel Matz is very expensive. Yes. And, <laughs> You came before that, but also, but the gold, the gold of the Yamsuf was ex extra. In fact, that's what Moshe said in the beginning of Devarim. Di Zahav is mentioned as one of the places where Klai Yisrael was, each one being a veiled criticism of Klai Yisrael. But he also argued to Hashem, Di Zahav, you were the one that set up Klai Yisrael for failure with the Cheda Egel, because you gave them all this stuff, all this gold. What was the Egel made out of? Was it made out of silver? It's not called the Egel HaKesef. No, there's no Egel HaKesef. Kesef is necessity. Kisufim, what we need, what we desire, what we need. But Zahaf is always, by definition, a luxury. And since when is wealth as a luxury a good thing? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's a good thing. When we have a Kodesh Kadashim, it's going to be a good thing. When on the golden tiaras of the horses, as the Navi say, it will be written Kodesh La Shem, that's when it's going to be a good thing. Did you know that the extra money that people donated to the Beis HaMikdash and coins. The Mishnah Shkarl tells us, what do they do with the extra? One of the, one of the opinions is that they took it and bought gold to line the inner walls of the Kodesh Kadashim. The Kodesh Kadashim was wall-to-wall -wall gold-plated. Wow. Some people say that, you know, we know the energy of the, we know the, energy of the Aron Kodesh was something that was, uh, you know, a mortal danger. It was, it was a nuclear, nuclear power. You were next to a, you know, it says that the Levium, because of their close proximity to Aaron Kodesh, many of them died. We know that here in Beit Shemesh, when the, when, when the Aaron Kodesh came back from, from the Plishtim, 50,000 people died here because they exposed themselves. It's like being exposed to radiation. It's so powerful. The, the energy rays that are coming out of there are, are, uh, have to be contained. And what was it contained in? That gold box. When we have something of the magnitude of the Luchos, with the divine power here in our lives, which is what Torah is, right? Then it's, it's unlimited, unlimited. There's where gold is relevant. Because gold is on that whole different level. You know, today, there are mo they're, they're always millionaires. You know, when we grew up, it's like a millionaire. I think there was even a show called The Millionaire. Yeah, was. Right? Oh, it's a millionaire. Today it's like millionaire. Okay, but I gotta pay tuition. You know, and I gotta make three chasanas in the Waldorf. There it goes. It's gone. Being a millionaire today is not wealthy. It's not middle class. <laughs> a million dollars in the bank? What are you talking about? I gotta support three sons in law. This, I need a house in Muncie. I gotta go wherever you pay stuff. I mean, this is reality. Millionaire, million dollars is nothing. Talk to me about being a billionaire. Okay, that's my anyway. What a millionaire was in the past generation <laughs> is what a billionaire is today, and I'm not exaggerating. There are many, many billionaires. Why? Because we're so close to the era when wealth is going to be holy, not just day-to-day -day wealth, but vast wealth, because that's what happens when the base of English comes to the world. The faucet of blessing is opened up and flows down to the world. Not drip, 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 okay. psh, but flows out to the entire world. 
Yeah. Let's see. I, 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 I know what to, I have nowhere to put it. I have nowhere to store it. Okay. So that's one thing. So Jewish people were told, by Moshe Rabbeinu, look, you have a mission. We're not, you, I just showed you the end, but don't think we're ready for it. You got a lot of training to do. You have a training camp of Emuna and other things you're going to have to do before Kabbalah is over. So just very quickly, because we have to end in five minutes, four minutes, is this. What, what was included in that training camp? The Mun. The Mun, right? What does Mun teach you? That there's no Kochi Votsam Yadi when it comes to Parnasa. Hashem decides Parnasa. And it's His decision. And it does go by your, by your deeds and actions. If, you, if you're really far away from Hashem, the Mun is further away. Okay? You're, you're, you're with Hashem, the Mun comes to you. The Mun, Rashi says, was, was a proof that there was no nature because it came down from Shamayim, okay, and, and uh, in such a way that defied gravity even. He says the Tal used to go up and, and, then, and, then, the ta, the, and, then, and then bring the, bring the Mon down. I'm not exactly sure what Rashi means. He says it was also like in a box container, came wrapped in cellophane. Okay. It's all covered, but it also created like a complete protection. It was wrapped, you know, like airline food. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, it's but, all this wrapping that's spoiling the environment. Yeah. So that was a natural wrap. It was organic. They could eat it. They could eat it. So much so that if the if the mud was not collected because they had enough. You. What happened to the mon? This is the Cham Hashemesh ben Ames. It would melt by the fourth hour of the day. So the early bird gets the worm. And we got to get up early to get it. And melting went, went to the Arab. And to, and to the animals in the field. Right. And it says that the animals, the deers and so on, would drink those waters. The Goyim would then capture it. And they'd say, what does that taste? There's something heavenly about it. This is not regular meat. And they would be jealous of the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. Now, why? Because we are being held accountable to that level. It's us. Mun was uh, um, the equivalent of eating, well, of course, the taste, was, the taste sensation was there, but it was eating hyper energy vitamins. There was no real pleasure in that, except if you, had, you were on the Madrega of Amuna. Okay? So. It was like, okay, take this, and you have all the nutrients that you want for the day. No, they didn't want that. What did they want? They wanted basar. They wanted to catch the birds and shech them and have a barbecue and have the taste of meat. I don't want to eat this mutton. It's like eating a vitamin. But you don't need anything else, and your body will be healthy. And, the, and the, you know the slough? It says, uh, before I should say, it was a very fatty bird. How much cholesterol through the roof? <laughs> It's the most unhealthy, food, the sick. most healthy food in the they world. They got very sick from it, this love. And they got sick for, from it. It was like a goose. Mm-hmm. I think you were from Vienna, right? They used to prepare stuffed goose livers, fried, whatever, rendered. That is, that is like, that's like eating 100 pounds of cholesterol. So, but they weren't ready for the mun, you understand completely. But that was part of the lesson. And then they went to Mala. And there they got three things. I just want to end with this. They got Sam Sham Lo Chok Mishpat. Chazal say, what does that mean? There's a different interpretation. Ramban has his own shot. Ramban says it meant to get them ready for the journey in the wilderness, which is what was going on here. Like how we're going to conduct ourselves now that we're here. Because the rules have changed. We're, we're living in the world of Ananiya Kavod and Mon. And people just needed to get like a, a training program. This is how it's going to go. This is what we're going to do. But that's Ramban. But Rashi says hmm, three things. Torah Duma, they learned at that place, before they got the Torah, when they went three days, didn't find water, and Hashem sweetens the water for them, they had three days worth of water, the Hashem said. That's why at the third day they start. They had enough water for three days. So third day, what are we going to do? And Hashem makes the water sweet and says, I'm going to teach you some Torah. This is how you're going to um, sweeten your life. Torah is going to take the bitterness out of your life. But I'm going to give you... Okay, training camp. We're going to learn about Shabbos. Because the Mun was, didn't fall on Shabbos. They were already exposed to the concept of Shabbos in a very big way. I'm going to teach you about Paraduma, that we can overcome death, 
and I'm going to teach you about dinim. I'm going to teach you about laws between man and his fellow man. Okay, why those three things? So these are the three concepts we have to take with us to Matan Torah. These are the three things that Hashem wants to learn for basic amuna. Number one, basic amuna is Shabbos. The material world is not run by you. Hashem is your provider. Hazan Salam Kulu Batuba. You don't provide for your family. You are asked to go out and do your best faith effort to provide for your family. But we have to believe that Hashem is running, is running. And then if we don't, and how do you demonstrate that every week? By keeping Shabbos. So you want wealth and prosperity in a healthy way? Keep Shabbos. That's why it's associated with Mun, because Mun is Parnasa. Shabbos is the key to Parnasa. And then Paraduma. What does Paraduma mean? It represents the fact that we can overcome life and death. When a person is contaminated by death, right? They touch a dead person or they lose someone, they have to go through a sprinkling. I'm not going to be able time to talk about it right now, but the paraduma is um, energy of life that will never go out. It's like the sneh. It can bring somebody back from death to life. Oh, what's that called? Trias ha mason. So that there is, there is, there is a life, and there's an afterlife, so, so Mun teaches you about how to be in this, this world. Paraduma teaches you that, we, that there's another world too. And that your life is much bigger than just this one lifetime. That's but an important thing. It, but it was connected to them because the Tal of Mun also, Tal is where we're going to have the Tiasa Mason also. That's correct. So that was the beginning. It was, a, it was already all in the Mun. And the last thing was Dinim, law and order. Meaning, Hashem will give Mun to the person who's closer to him and further away. So, and also deem. So I think that when we think about ourselves and our world, it's important for us to, to hold on to these three principles because we have to receive the Torah every day. Machadish Betuvo, Cholyam Tami, the Chiddush of the Olam, via Torah happens every single day. These are the things we must keep in mind. The Shabbos concept, the Mun concept, the Tchias HaMesim, there's a life, there's an afterlife, the soul's eternal, and most importantly, and we're ready for the mission of the Balsatan. Thank you. Thank you.